Hey friends, Amanda here at Bare Bones Living. Welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, I thought today we would go around and I have not yet done a full garden tour. Um, and I thought it would also be fun to kind of show you guys my backyard setup and what we're doing with it um, in my suburban area. Um, and kind of give you an idea of the space that we're working with and what we're doing with it. Um, so I have my little man in here and it's a, it's a nice day but it's only about 45 degrees so we're gonna see how much we can get done here. But yeah, let's, let's check it out. So first we will start with our patio here and you guys saw how I repotted my uh, blueberries and I had mentioned how I had to protect them from my dog and how she had already gotten to my one blueberry plant my OG blueberry plant and she had destroyed that well the morning after I transplanted these out uh, she proceeded to rip the OG back out and one of my other um, blueberry bushes and she ripped all the branches off of the one and there wasn't much left of the OG anyway so uh, not too much further damage was done to that one but I just decided to repot them and stick these tomato cages around them to try to protect them from her um, and the one plant that she did leave, funny enough, is the only blueberry plant that I have that has never flowered. I don't know what's wrong with that plant. It always has beautiful foliage on it. I don't know if it's the variety, but I just keep growing it to see what's going to happen. But, of course, that's the only one that she has not yet gotten to. <laughs> um, so that's where... That's what's going on with those. And then I have my two green stalks there. And in this tall one here, you'll see I just have the three strawberry plants that I bought from Azure. None of my existing strawberries have sprouted yet. I fertilize them with worm castings and we'll see if they come back. If not, I'll just have to propagate runners that come off of these new plants. They were, they were pretty old anyway um, and probably needed to be replaced. And then in this leaf planter, on the top I have all my spinach. And those are doing really great. You can see this one I'm going to have to put more seeds in, but that just means I'll have basically secession sown. And then down from there... I transplanted out some parsley, some sage, and some dill. And they're just still getting acclimated. And then around the bottom you can see I have some kale plants. Those are the um, blue curled scotch kale. Then moving over to our patio garden, raised garden bed here, you'll see I have some of these milk jug and juice juglet uh, tops. And you may be wondering what that's all about. And those are actually protecting my uh, pea sprouts from the bunnies and probably from my dog as well. Came up with this kind of stroke of genius idea instead of using the juice jugs to sprout you know the seeds in and then transplanting them I wanted to direct sow them so I just cut the tops of the juice jugs and took the tops off so that the rainwater could still get to them and I'm going to actually be taking those off fairly soon. I want them to grow up and out of those jugs before I take them off and start 
trailing them up the trellis with the ones that are going to trail up the trellis. The ones that are in the middle there are more of like a dwarf and they won't actually grow up that high. But I want them to get more substantial before I take those off um, so that they can hopefully survive the pest pressure. And then I have some radishes in the front here and then in between the two jugs. Then you'll see here in these pots that had my blueberries before in the front, you know, this front one here and the back one over there. I went and I bought two new blueberry plants because, you know, my dog got to them and we really love blueberries. So in case they don't survive, we still wanted to have blueberries. So I got a, I think this one, let me see what this says. I can't remember. It's called a blue crop blueberry and that one back there is a Jersey blueberry yeah. and so like I said those are backups or if my other two still pull through then we just have two additional blueberry plants which is never a bad thing so then down the rest of this bed is pretty barren um, down at the end there you'll see those are some green onions that I planted last year that I overwintered and I just didn't do anything with them last year. So I'm just using, still using those and they're growing just fine. So I'll use those in recipes and things like that and we've been enjoying that. And then it circles around the back of my patio here and there are some more green onions along the front here and then these little plants scattered throughout those are red vein sorrels which I think are just beautiful and they have kind of like a lemony flavor to them they are pretty um, kind of tart tasting kind of pungent you have to definitely pick them young to eat them um, and have them be a little milder but they're I think gorgeous but that's all we have going on in here for now. And then that goes off to our um, row cover here. And I'll show you what's going on under there. See that our row cover has been doing really awesome. Um, you can see all the red vein sorrels in the back there. Um, those are frost hardy. And they didn't need to be under there, but it was just easier to put them under with the row cover and everything. And then our onions are doing great. And our kale and our cilantro are doing great as well. It was doing better, but I mean, surprise, surprise, my dog made her way through. There's a hole in the back and it was really small and she made it really big and came in and dug out this whole portion here of my garden bed which included onions and kale and I found a lot of the plants still intact and I replanted them so we'll see how they persevere but the stuff that she didn't touch over here you can see is still really strong and they don't, these plants do not need to be under this frost fabric anymore. They would do fine without, but I am keeping it up to protect them from my dog <laughs> as much as I can. So that's why I still have that on there. And then you guys saw me just plant out these potato bags. I did make that fourth potato bag down at the end like I said I was going to. That was just like three days ago that I did that so there hasn't been much change in that but those are just sitting up on my uh, patio table here again out of reach of the dog. And then I'll show you guys my uh, planter bags here. I still have the two broccoli bags over here. Uh, that one has three. The back one has three in it. The third one is down there. And then this one just has 
two plants in it. And then my carrots are doing really well and growing. And then it looks like a squirrel has gotten up here, or a chipmunk, and was digging in my parsnips and my eggplant. And the eggplant won't uh, germinate for a while yet. But we'll see how those go. But as you can see, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you guys this. This is the top of my hot tub. And it is not functional right now. And so I just use it to house and hold my starts. <laughs> and it looks dilapidated and terrible and it's embarrassing, but this is life. And here you'll see I have some kales and um, sage and a bunch of lettuces and a bunch of more kales back there. And like I said, this is just a staging place for my cold hardy when I run out of space other places once I divide things out and I need more space for things like I can't fit more than I think six of those like the blue cherry that are all divided out in my greenhouse so I put them out here when they can tolerate the outside temperature um, but I have some I don't actually know what those ones are these are all lettuces, but I can't remember exactly which lettuces they are. I think these red ones are all dandelion. And then those kind of twerpy ones are arugula. Those bigger ones there are tetsoi. I have some red merlot over there and some butter crunch back there. And then I have dinosaur kale and the blue curled scotch kale is in the back there but you can see that I kind of scorched my lettuces a little bit I moved them out too fast and so quite a few of them died back and that was my fault but live and learn so then on the back here the back of my patio garden this is my pollinator garden that was glorious and now it is covered in chairs to try to deter my dog from going in and digging it up uh, because she loves digging up this nice lush soil and you can see right down in there that's like her favorite spot to dig. Um, but the only thing that is really coming up right now in this garden is my comfrey, which I'm really happy to see. And I'm going to actually be putting up a barrier fence here. It won't look pretty, but I want to make this beautiful again. My um, lemon balm is right here, and I'm surprised I haven't seen it growing back yet. I thought that would definitely... Be coming back it comes back every year maybe it's just still needs a little bit more time but we'll see but this was all full of bee balm and um, chamomile and I had some milkweed in here I had some fennel um, I had borage lots of borage in here this is a beautiful pollinator garden. You can go check my uh, garden tours from last year. And I was hoping that it would just reseed itself. But with the dog coming through and tearing it all up, I don't know that anything will volunteer because she's disturbed the soil so much. There's a couple of chamomile starts over there that might still flourish, but... We'll see. I'm hoping that this... Oh, and I had uh, echinacea in here as well. That's what those, those sticks are pointing up there. That's echinacea. 
cone flowers. So I'm hoping to restore the beauty of this. I just haven't had the time yet to put up that barrier and put the time in to fix this and make it what it deserves to be. Over here is my herb garden and it doesn't look like much right now. It just has our chives in it that we've been harvesting. Uh, that's sticking up back there in the back. That is our lavender plant. Um, there's some sage coming up in there. But it's not looking very glorious at the moment. Oh, it looks like our tarragon is coming up back there behind that little fence. But yes, as you can see, my dog is going insane through here, blowing off steam apparently. So then we have our greenhouse. And in here, I have my tango celery is getting acclimated. And then over here, I have my parsley and dill getting acclimated as well. And then right outside that, oops, wrong way. There we go. Down this fence line is my raspberry bushes. And the raspberries are doing really great. You can see they're greening out and there's new growth popping up down here, you'll see. And raspberry spreads if you're unaware of that. So you'll see like little pop-ups. There's some in my grass over there. Um, right here, right here you'll see this little twig that was broken off by the dogs as well, but it is, it does have new growth on that. That is a black raspberry bush that was struggling through last year and apparently will continue to struggle this year. Um, but these are the red raspberries that are flourishing so greatly here. And then at the end is my blackberry bush that I have another tomato cage over because the dog totally destroyed this gigantic bush that I had. Um, but I can see that there is growth down there in the bottom. I don't know if you can really tell, but right at the bottom you can see like those little red and green shoots that are coming up. So I know that that will survive. I'm just trying to protect it as best as possible with this tomato cage and deter her from trying to gnaw on that anymore. And then I have my compost here that you guys saw me working on. And then we go to our back gardens. And in this first back garden here, this is just garlic that I have growing. I planted this garlic out in October. And then right next to it, I don't know if you can see here. So what you'll see here are these little shoots. And those are from store-bought garlic that I had on my counter that was sprouting and I decided just to put plant that in my garden bed and see how it did. But you can see how different uh, the growth is and they did get a little shocked from being moved out already sprouted and planted but I figured why not give it a shot and then back there you can see some more garlic and those were actually last year's garlic and they sprouted super late and then they overwintered so those will be the first ones to die back I'm interested to see how those turn out since those were those are a year old but this bed usually is my tomato bed because it gets the most sun these garden beds that we built when we first moved in here seven years ago I built these garden beds or Mike built these garden beds and 
we didn't really think of the placement of these because they don't get, we have so many trees overhead, it gets pretty shaded here. Um, but this bed gets the most sun, so this was my tomato bed. But had I waited and analyzed our sun better, I would have, I would have put this garden where the raspberries are because that gets the most sun. But that's old news now and we're not going to change it but so this year I just made it this year and last year I made it uh, just garlic and this is pretty much the only thing that I planted in these back gardens here this is the second garden bed here you can see the first one there then I had this trellis cattle panel, cattle panel trellis that I built that I have my cucumbers over and then this is the second bed and I have nothing in here except for these two chive plants here and then some more green onions over here. Um, I have not planted anything in here because I'm planting everything like I said in grow bags and this is the more shaded of the two garden beds so I'm just not going to use this this year I don't think then just to the left of that are our chickens and you guys have seen our chickens before but there they are again and Mike built this uh, chicken coop for us I don't know now three four years ago he based it off of SSL family dads chicken coop design and it's worked out great for us this a frame we did use as a mobile coop for our meat birds when we got them two years ago we will not get meat birds again while we are in the suburban setting because they poop too much um, and they're disgusting so we just attached it Mike built like a little kind of tunnel through there so you can see that they can walk freely in their run but it is covered over top um, to protect them from aerial predators and they're totally they're totally protected in there and we have predator apron underneath everything all the way around plus the stone so that back there was our original chicken coop three years ago when we just had two little bards and then a couple weeks later we got our two acres and we quickly realized that we needed more space and could not grow four chickens in that little that little coop so I'm sure we'll gift that to somebody or I don't know maybe use that as a rabbit hutch or something like that it's pretty useless as far as a chicken coop is concerned so just for perspective sake so you guys can see this is my backyard my patio is straight ahead there my compost is over there um, obviously you can see, you know, my neighbors are right there and right through there, but this is the size of my backyard. There's my garden beds to the left of me. And then the chicken coop to the right of me. And this is the space that we are working with. Oh, and that's a that's a rain barrel that's just open open on the top because we didn't want to run our asphalt run run water that had gone over our asphalt. Uh, you know the tar and asphalt and whatever is in the roofing material. We didn't want that in our rainwater, so instead we just wanted it straight rainwater but we didn't want mosquitoes getting into it so we put a very fine mesh covering over that and it just 
openly collects rainwater for us. But that is our little setup there. So I realized that was a pretty like rough uh, kind of tour of our backyard, of our gardens. Nothing's looking very lush or uh, noteworthy at this point. Um, but in an another month, this everything will be really full and beautiful. And that's just kind of where we're at right now. Um, and you gotta start somewhere, right? So I wanted to document this show you where we're at, tell you our plans. I'm gonna plant some more of those spinach seeds. Um, I'm gonna put this border up and hopefully clean up, de-weed and clean up this garden and bring it back to its glory, hopefully. Maybe throw out some seeds, see what else pops up on its own. Um, and then we're going to be pulling out our tomatoes and I'm going to be, I got to pot up those celeries, those celery plants. That's actually probably my next thing on my to-do list is to do those celery and get them on my hot tub so that they can start really growing and taking off. I can't, I can't imagine that they're not getting root bound in that uh, plug tray. So we gotta, we gotta work on those pretty quickly. But that's where we're at at this moment in time and we'll catch up and I'll show you where we're at maybe in a couple weeks. But I hope you guys like this tour. I hope you guys kind of get where, what we're working with now and kind of get a feel of our space. Um, and I hope that you guys stick around Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future garden tours. And uh, thanks for joining us and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.